I wrote bang on for too long. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, Mike coming. Yeah. So I spent a lot of the past year going to schools around the country, running a program which um, basically connects them up with their MPs, but also their councillors, and they're actually getting them in the room or getting them via video conference talking to each other. And what was striking with young, young people, particularly those that are sort of between 13 and 16, is that they are growing up believing that the solutions all stem from the top because the political literacy isn't there for people to understand that more often than not, actually, it's the councillors who are the ones who can resolve so many of the problems. So I'm curious actually about, well, as mayor, but in general, what is your view of how we tackle this issue where the, where the political literacy isn't there and people still believe that, you know, if they just go to their MP, they'll be the one that solves it? Yeah, I think that there's a very, very interesting question going on there. I mean, I'm, I'm really interested in this because I think it's something that I observe in schools in Cumbria, and I, I think you put your finger on it. I don't know whether I've got another, another thing here, but the um, this question of political literacy uh, is partly dependent on the model that subconsciously the teacher shares with the student or the parent shares with the student. So um, a lot of what people seem to be learning um, in politics is a model, I think, certainly looking superficially at the stuff on the walls, there's a lot of pictures of Mandela, there's a lot of pictures of Gandhi, there's a lot of be the change you want to see in the world. Uh, and the implicit message seems to be that you can engage in a quasi-revolutionary, world historic, heroic, transformatory act. And I feel that you're setting people up for disappointment, that if actually the business of worrying about um, governing London is what's going wrong with the signaling on the Piccadilly line, or what's going wrong in the human resources allocation of the number of years that police spend in front line, or how is the funding working for addiction services, or you know, what are we doing about domestic boilers and air pollution, but the model in people's head is Gandhi or Mandela, uh, then there is a, you're setting people up to feel that politicians are always a diminished version of their expectations. So I, I think there's a, a problem. And I think what it does, I think it drives a certain kind of populism because it creates a, a view that a real politician is going to be intensely radical, that a real politician is going to be a world historical figure, that a real politician is going to be a messiah, a real politician is going to be a hero. And that encourages the populists to tell to tell fairy stories, because these heroes actually generally exist only in fairy stories. They, they do exist with Gandhi in British India. They do exist with Mandela at the end of apartheid. But these are very, very rare world historical events. It's very difficult in the everyday life of the government of Penrith right, to be Mandela as a local <laughs> councillor uh, in Penrith. Um, but if you watch. If you watch Boris's um, initial speeches from Downing Street, he is actually producing this incredibly sort of romantic fairy story vision of Britain. Where very little of it is about how. It is about the business of actually running a country. It's just a massive exercise in sort of soothing everybody's egos, right? Telling everyone how amazing our science is, how amazing our design is, how beautiful our country is what a great global power we are, what a fantastic military we have, what an extraordinary NHS we have. Kind of celebrating ourselves, bigging ourselves up as though we're a sort of um, rather underpowered rugby team going into a match needing a sort of, um, sort of pep talk. So I, I think part of the answer to your question has to be that even the teachers or maybe the parents subconsciously haven't really got to grips with the horrible business of politics. And I, I'm the same. I mean, when I went into politics, I came into politics, you know, disgusted by the Iraq and Afghan wars, thinking I'm going to politics to stop anything like that happening again. And it took me some time to realize that actually the most useful ways in which I could help people had nothing to do with the, the stuff that I thought I was engaged in.
Uh, I'm going to